I often feel wobbly, not in the way that I move, but in life. I've been explicitly interested in wobbly women over the past year. But if I really think about it, I've been interested in wobbly people a lot longer than that. You see, when you lead this wobbly life, you look around for others who also don't seem to have their ducks in a row. But whenever I looked around, all I saw were these amazing women doing highly impressive things, and I would often wonder, how? How were they doing it? How were their lives so put together, so seemingly perfect? And so I reached out to and connected with as many of them as I could, and the conversations were really illuminating. Because when I dug a little deeper, I realized almost all of them, at one point or another, some even on a constant basis, well, they were dealing with some really hard and challenging issues. These women were dealing with depression, divorce, death of a loved one, professional setbacks, to name a few. These women were experiencing the waves of ups and downs with the ground beneath their feet constantly, abruptly, violently even, shaking underneath them. And while they were, by and large, happy people, they felt like they could just barely stay a half a step ahead of the next seismic shift, but they just couldn't catch a break. I noticed, though, of these women, some, well, some didn't miss a beat, while others got sucked into impasse. And it made me realize that when the ground trembled underneath them, there are women who wobble, and there are women who wobble well. And these experiences really resonated with my own experiences of feeling wobbly, constantly finding that I'm trying to tread water, trying to stay afloat, especially earlier on in my career when I was a business TV anchor and reporter, and then later on as a CEO of a startup that I co-founded, all the while when my husband and I have five children at home. Times were tough trying to deal with my medical issues to the kids' medical issues, from miscarriages to misfortunes in the business world. Now, I was told from the outside looking in that my life looked perfect. Newsflash, it's not. I appear steady not because I'm not wobbling, but because I have learned to walk with the rhythm of the wobble and have therefore learned to wobble well. Now, I'm not always great at it, but I do practice it on a daily basis. That's super important. And I want to be clear that I'm not talking about this idea of having balance. I really dislike that buzzword, balance. To have balance means all energies are spent towards restoring equilibrium, for perfection, for proportion. I'm not looking to do that. Feeling wobbly means those scales, well, those scales are constantly shifting, and you're okay with that. Feeling wobbly is for those moments when you're not 100% on. It's for those moments when you're not operating at your best. Feeling wobbly is to acknowledge that you aren't quite stuck but you aren't unstuck either. Feeling wobbly is to experience the deep challenges and losses of life so profoundly that it creates lingering uncertainty in your mind and a potential impasse in any one or all aspects of your life. Now look, often we hit roadblocks. That's normal. But what happens when you hit one in your personal life, your professional life, and your family life all at the same time? Society? Well, society tells us to snap out of it. But what if it's not about bouncing back to move forward, but about owning your wobbliness to move forward instead? We often put a lot of emphasis on words like grit, resilience, persevering in the face of adversity. And that's all fine and perhaps appropriate in certain instances, but as I've learned, not all. Sometimes soldiering on isn't always the answer, nor is it sustainable. Sometimes it's about embracing the mundane, the dire, the unlucky moments of life. So how can you own your wobbliness? I've spoken with hundreds of women and have identified five characteristics of women who wobble well. Now, these are just the characteristics I've seen emerge most frequently in my conversations. By no means is this an exhaustive list. And these traits aren't inherent to who these women are. With practice, you too can wobble well. So the first trait is agile numbness. Often when something bad or unfortunate happens, we react with a range of emotions. Sadness, fear, frustration, denial, despair even. And those are all perfectly fine emotions. But what if our approach was one of equanimity? 
or what I view as agile numbness. And I know, I use the word numb, and that has negative connotations. I'm not talking about the type of numbness achieved with alcohol, substances, or medications. And I am not telling you to suppress or ignore your emotions either. That's not healthy. But what if you were able to look at your numbness as a strength, as a tool? What if you were able to take your numbness and turn it on and off, making it agile? Well, I have found that this type of numbness allows you to approach unfortunate events with an evenness of temper to really handle it with a fuller understanding versus the type of temperament that forces you to quickly soldier on. I think of Penny, who was working when she found out that her uncle passed away. And she went from making funeral arrangements, from calling her clients to making funeral arrangements, back to making funeral arrangements so seamlessly and within days of giving birth. When I asked her how she was able to get through these moments, she told me she focused on the outcome, not the process. She was numb to the process, and that really helped her during these dark moments. So agile numbness. The second trait I've seen in women who wobble well is they are comfortable with chaos. And specifically, they're comfortable at managing chaos. And I want to be clear, there's a difference between stress and chaos. Stress is the result of chaos. Women who wobble well, well, they know that bad periods, they don't last that long. And similarly, good periods don't either. So when they find themselves in an unfortunate event, they move through it knowing it will eventually come to an end. And they're able to forecast future chaos, and future stress. In addition, they are very efficient at triaging chaos into what's time-sensitive and important, thereby reducing overall stress in their life. But a little bit of stress, actually that goes a long way for these women. I found that when you increase stress, you actually improve performance. Essentially, women who wobble well like a little bit of stress to a certain point if, number one, they can control it, and number two, they find it motivating. So take Leslie, she's a great example of this. Leslie gave birth to her fourth child, who was born with Usher syndrome 1B, which means her beautiful baby girl was born deaf and will get progressively blind over time. While this was really hard news for her family to adjust to, right away she took it upon herself to make sure her family was up to speed on American Sign Language. She also launched, within weeks of her daughter's diagnosis, a nonprofit to raise awareness. And she took a new job. Because as she told me, she needed to do something away from it all and for herself. Leslie's a great example of someone who managed her chaos, was motivated by her stress, and used that to give her a sense of clarity and a path forward. The third trait I've seen in women who wobble well is they are multi-tethered, which is to say that their whole world doesn't revolve around one thing. So it's not their spouse, it's not their kids, it's not their job, it's not themselves. They are multi-tethered. This is important because when one line untethers, they are able to still maintain their sense of identity, to be that sense, to have that wholeness to themselves. I think of Miranda, whose husband passed away a few years ago from cancer, and the couple had two young children. And while this was a really traumatic time in her life, she was able to still make sound decisions in other aspects of her life that grounded her, because she was still able to find other aspects that were important to her. And that's really, really important. When I talked to her about how she was able to process this time, we talked about how our brains overemphasize negative things. So whether that's negative emotions or experiences, feedback or criticism, and women who wobble well, well, we're attuned to our fact that our brains are doing this, and we seek out pillars that radiate positivity. And by being multi-tethered, well, that helps with that. The fourth trait is best exemplified by my friend who struggled to conceive a child with her husband and found it just really hard to watch her friends post on social media about their pregnancies. Yet, she launched a neonatal company to help women with infertility issues. I call this fourth trait reframing the struggle. Women who wobble well lean into and reframe the struggle, and they look at it from a different perspective. Change, change is not a threat, it's an opportunity. 
And by accepting change, they're acknowledging that they may not always have the answers, and there isn't always a guaranteed outcome. And therein lies the unlock of what reframing the struggle can do, the ability to be adaptive and to grow. The last trait I've seen in women who wobble well is they vocalize vulnerabilities. I've talked to countless women who have lost a child, been laid off, are dealing with custody and childcare issues. And these women have opened themselves so freely with friends, colleagues, peers, family, therapists, social media even. They've shared their fears and their frustrations, but also their hopes and their dreams. And in doing so, they're creating connections, they're creating bonds, they're creating a support system to be there for them during their wobbliest moments. Vocalizing vulnerabilities frequently is key. So these are five traits I've observed in women who wobble well. These traits, these women weren't born with them. These are traits born out of mindset, perspective, and practice. After all, the whole concept of wobbling well means we walk with the rhythm of the wobble as unpredictable as it may be, and we don't just move through it. No, we flow through it with humility and acceptance. And we can do this for those big, big wobbles that are life-altering. We can also do this for those small wobbles, those micro wobbles that are more day-to-day -day and creep into our day and can be equally as overwhelming. So the next time you feel the urge or pull of society telling you to snap out of it, to quote unquote, be resilient, question whether or not you have to bounce back quickly to move forward, or if owning your wobbliness will allow you a path forward instead. And I hope these five traits will help you. Thank you.